32.3% of homeowners in my market overpaid for their home in November of 2023. Well, let me rephrase, not so fast. They paid over asking price, and that's what this video is about. Paying over asking price, pros and cons, and then I got a bonus tip at the end for you if you're thinking about buying a home in 2024. So we're gonna talk about all of that next. paying over asking price. So let's start with a little bit of the data. As I mentioned, 32.3% of homeowners in my market paid over asking price. That's the North Shore, Chicagoland area. Um, this was from November of 2023. I'll put a chart up here. Uh, as you can see, the last 12 months where we've been, and you're gonna see that summer of 2022, we saw a high mark upwards of 47 percent so 47.8 percent in june of 2022. now maybe you're thinking oh ryan this is your market by the way have i not said my name is ryan skaggs this is the mortgage minute this channel is dedicated to everything mortgage real estate and interest rates if you've made it this far in the video i'd be forever grateful for that subscribe i've got 400 plus subscribers i have a goal in 2024 of getting to a thousand i would be forever grateful uh, for the subscribe and make sure and put a comment below if you agree disagree or what your thoughts are on the housing market now let's talk about hey north shore chicago right that that's that's not me well 28.8 percent in the united states paid over asking price in november of 2023 so obviously we're into january of 2024 and this data lags a little bit but with that said upwards of 25 to 30 percent are still paying over an asking price to be able to acquire that home. So there's a lot of areas that this is still going on. Now, I made a video before talking about housing prices in 2024, and I'll, I'll post it here right above, but we're gonna see some declines in some areas, but we're still gonna see strong appreciation, I think, in others as well. So let's go through the pros and cons. Let's make this short and sweet here. Pros, obviously, you're gonna make your offer very appealing if you were going up in price, right? So if you're saying, hey, I'm gonna go $1,000 over whoever comes next in escalation clause, um, then in that case, that is very appealing to a seller. But what I would tell you is try to figure out the terms of the actual offer, right? What is gonna be ideal for them? A quick close, a slow close, whatever it may be. W walk through that with your agent. What do you know about this seller? What has the other agent told you? You know, what, what are the what are they looking for? Obviously there's price, but there's other terms that you could potentially negotiate in to make your offer more appealing. I see that every day in my business where a buyer was second, but because of the agent that they're working with or the terms that they had or a combination of all of the above, they were able to get the property under contract and they might not have been the highest offer on the table. So something to consider there. Cons. How easy is this? Of course, you're potentially going to overpay. Now, what I want you to consider is that, do you need to be on that street? Do you you want to back up to that park or the forest preserve? Or is this the absolute plot of land that you need because you've got plans you know, in the back or whatever it may be, right? Your sister lives just down the road. Your mother or father-in-law is down the street and thus you can drop your kids off for babysitting, whatever it may be. I want you to understand how that might equate to you, but maybe not someone else. And the reason I bring that up is that that's probably not going to equate to an appraiser. The appraiser is trying to look at the general market value of the property. Because you want to be by that park, now there could be an added adjustment because it backs up to that park. That's great. But not everybody wants to back up to a public park. So therefore, it might adjust a little bit up, but not a lot. For you, it's worth more. Right, So maybe for you, if it's a long-term home, it's worth popping that offer up a little bit, right? But not everyone. And if it does not appraise and an appraiser looks at it and says the overall market value, let's give you an example. You paid 410, you got it under contract and only appraises for 400. Well, what happens? Well, that means you have to bridge the gap of how far you came up short. So I am giving the 30,000 foot view here but with that said, you have to bridge that gap and bring additional funds to closing to be able to close on that home. The lender will give you the lesser 
of the purchase price or the appraised value. The lesser, not the greater. So if it appraises for 400, but you're purchasing for 410, we're gonna go off the 400. And then you would have to bring in those additional funds. So something to keep in mind is that the appraisal could potentially come in low and you might have to come in with extra dollars if you were going up and over asking price. Now, a couple last things here. First of all, I just gotta put this asterisk on here. Just because you're paying over asking does not mean you're overpaying. If the property's worth around 400, the agent and seller could come to an agreement. Let's put it on for 380, drum up a bunch of interest to know that we're super well priced and let's try to get as many offers as possible in the first 10 days. That is a great marketing strategy, especially in a low inventory market. Now, will somebody pay over 400? The market would dictate that, but that's a great way to sell the property. Now, Again, someone paying 400 is paying market value, but they priced it at 380, so you're paying over, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're overpaying. So get that out of your head just because you're going over if you're one of the 25 to almost 50% of people that are paying over to be able to get your property in the United States in the last you know 12 to 18 months. But you have to be able to understand what is the current value of the home. Here's my bonus tip for you as we wrap up. Go to your agent and say, what is the value of the home? And how did you derive that? What comparables did you use? Not what it's gonna take for the seller to accept your offer. That is something completely different than what the actual value of the home, right? If they price at 380 and they have full intention that they're gonna get 450 and you're offering 400 to 410, market value is 400, you're not getting that property. They're just not gonna accept it. It may take 450 to get it, but they're on Mars on another planet and you need to bring them back. You need to find a property with a seller that is you know, back on planet Earth that is gonna sell it for a market price, right? So one thing to keep in mind is not what it's gonna to take to acquire the property. What is the actual value? And your buyer's agent should be doing a CMA or competitive marketing analysis, understanding what other comparables are out there and these are the questions that I would tell you to ask your agent, is that what comparables are you using to be able to come up with this price? How alike or dislike are these properties, are these addresses, are these properties, than our subject property, the property that we're looking to make an offer on? And then kind of lastly, is that when did these properties close? Six months ago, a year ago, whatever it may be, uh, a month ago? then ask, has there been any adjustment over this period of time in this market? Have we seen prices you know, going up, going down? What's that look like? Only in your individual market are you gonna be able to answer that question. And that is why it's so important to have a good team behind you. Make sure and understand who you're working with on the real estate side. It's so important not to get in over your head or overpay for that property. So. Again, Ryan Skaggs from The Mortgage Minute. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode talking about paying over asking price. Again, I'd be forever grateful for that subscribe. Click that bell icon below, put your comments below, and make sure and stay safe. And we'll see each other again very, very soon.